What's good? What's good? What's good? How y'all doing? We're gonna get started, man. Let's sip couple of for life. I'm excited today. We're doing our last class of the term. And uh, we're focusing on one of my favorite artists, Rhapsody. We're doing Right Like Rhapsody. And I think probably one of my favorite uh, devices as well, which is the the illusion. So, before we kind of get into it, let me just see where you're at. The cipher question for today, I don't know if you can see, it might be a little small, but it's, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? And what would you do there? So, as a way to check, see where we're at, see who's rocking with me at the moment. So, where would you go? Where are you at now? Where would you travel to? For myself, uh, let me see. I've been getting the traveling bug lately. You know, being cooped up, I guess. But even before that, I've been. Uh, I like traveling because I like getting new perspectives. And so I want to do more of that in my life. So I'm thinking, uh, let me see. I definitely want to visit the continent of Africa for sure. And I can't think of the name of the region, but there's a place in West Africa that uh, I was able to kind of trace my lineage to that I would love to see. So that is uh, where I would go, I believe. But really, I would just love to go anywhere. That's one continent I've never been to. I've been to South America. I've been to Europe. I've not been to Australia. I'm going to get to Australia sooner than later. But where would you go if you could travel anywhere in the world? And we will get into it. Let me know if you're here. Present Rocket with us. Let's see if I can even figure it out. Let me see. Um, this one's a busy one. Like that. All right. Well, let's keep it moving. Uh, we're going to jump right in it today. Right like Rhapsody, so uh, if you don't know who Rhapsody is, she's an MC out of the, the North Carolina area. Her latest album release is Eve, and that's why I'm actually pulling a song for it today. So I'm pulling it from, uh, this, the track is called Nina, then I'm pulling the song. And uh, she's with, uh, it's a wonderful world music group, uh, the Rock Nation, and uh, she's uh, just dope, just very lyrical, intricate styles, rhyming patterns, all that great stuff. It's uh, somebody to really take you to that next next level uh, if you like the style. So, and today we're diving into the art of illusion. Um, in the comments in the chat, let me know if you are if you're familiar with what an illusion is. Do you know how to use them? This is not illusion, like with the eye. That's like magic trick kind of thing this is illusion so this deals with the cultural references that's basically what it is so anytime that a piece of writing um, references generally an event um, person or a group um, you're, you're using the rhetorical device of an illusion and you know, I'll talk about this, but there's levels to illusions, right? There's, you know, the the illusion level when you are kind of like at a basic where you're using like a simile or, or just a direct metaphor. So when you're just basically saying like you're like somebody. So I constantly, um, while freestyling, I might say, make a reference to Muhammad Ali. Um, 
and sometimes I'll do it directly to the person, you know, Muhammad Ali, or I might do it to, uh, you know, one of his famous quotes, for like a butterfly sting like a bee, all right? Um, and if you're doing it on a simple level, it's just like, yeah, I'm like Muhammad Ali, I feel like a butterfly sting like a bee. But then there's ways that you can layer um, illusions to like then extend the comparison further and then create some, um, you know, some um, um, layered meanings in your lyrics. And uh, Rhapsody is a master at this. So, so an illusion, just basically cultural references in your writing. And I like to think of it through events, persons and groups as like a way to get, wrap my head around it. I'm sure there are more other ways that you can uh, tap into the power of illusion as well. But it's uh, using the words to bring up some aspect of a culture to people's minds. So we're going to go straight to the boards with it. And uh, let me uh, first get the screen. Look at um, three parts. So it's, it's from one song, and the song again is called Nina. And off the Eve album, uh, that's not gonna work. Better pin the color. That can work. City. And then the song is called Nina. And then the album is Eve. Side note on the album is that she does like a, uh, <laughs> she does a, like every track title is like the name of, um, essentially a powerful woman of uh, history and it's uh pretty cool to like uh, get into that so um we're gonna dive into it so she starts this is like the first line of the song right here emit light rap or emit till i drew a line without showing my body that's a skill and you know looking at it, it looks like i'm just doing a live uh a live video right now. I don't have folks in the in the stream, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm laughing because I have my suspicions why. Um, and uh, it's an issue. It's an issue with us. You know, if we can't recognize forms of genius that show up outside of the norm, then uh, it's not it's not the problem of the geniuses. Rhapsody says definitely one of the geniuses of our culture. And so, you know, if y'all rocking with it, cool. But right now it's just it's just me. It's just dolo. So we're gonna keep it going. Um so emit light rap or emit till I drew a line without showing my body. That's a skill. So we got our um rhymes, of course. So the end rhymes there, we have this till and skill um you know here we'll, we can classify it as a rhyme essentially it's the same sound but two different words um emit like rap or emit till um you know like looking at all the internal rhymes that don't necessarily line up but your ear still picks up the same so you got light with line uh, let's see what the app show up my body. I drew a line. I made a line rapper in the I drew a line without showing my body. That's a skill. Um, show by, you know, my. There you go. So those kind of unplanned rhymes. Right? The light line in my there. Um, and then you also have with rap in that's. Okay. 
Uh, now let's look. So we're talking about illusions here. So uh, the person that's being referenced, uh, if you know, put what you know about Emmett Till uh, in the comments, or in the chat, depending on when you are checking this out. Um, but if you don't know, like if you don't get this line, right? Most likely it's going to be because of this right here, the Emmett Till part, meaning that you don't know who Emmett Till is and you don't get the reference because everything else is pretty, you know, straightforward. I mean, admit like, admit it's not one of those words you hear comments so you may have some like, oh, what does admit mean? But for the most part, admit light means to like show light. Um, Emmett light, light rap or Emmett Till. I drew a line about show my body. That's a skill. So if you don't get Emmett Till, then there's some other connections that you may um, not get. But um, before I get into Emmett Till, I want to say this though. So even without understanding the Emmett Till reference, this line by itself, I drew a line without showing my body. That's a skill. That's understandable on its own right because Rhapsody's a female MC and you know as it you know they're and again this is not any judgment any shade but there's like MCs out there who are dope but they also are showing their bodies um, as part of their, their their artistry right so um and uh what up Jay let's see what his mother said his mother shown the world what happened to her son um touching on that yes so so Jay's touching in on what em the Emmett Till reference, right? And so essentially, um, if you don't know the story of Emmett Till, this is like the picture of him that I can find online that's not the uh, open casket picture because that's a little bit uh, um, intense. And, you know, I don't want to like, I want to, I want to focus on it as a rhetorical device. I'm not trying to get like, you know, into the politics behind all of it. Um, even though I, I could, <laughs> uh, but the, the short and sweet of Emmett Till is that essentially, um, he was accused of whistling at a white woman. Uh, and I think this was this, not very long ago. That's like the sad part. I think it was like maybe in the fifties or the sixties. So I was surprised when I saw the year, um, so he was accused of whistling at a white woman and in you know the segregated you know jim crow south and so as a consequence essentially um a you know i don't know if it was like later that evening i don't know the details but essentially he was murdered uh for this right and like gruesomely so to where like uh Emmett Till's mother, when they had the, uh, you know, the, the wake and everything, um, showed, like, the, the, the face, and you can find pictures of it, and it's, like, pretty, like, disturbing, uh, but he was, like, basically beaten to death, uh, for this, and now, fun fact, later, it turns out that, uh, so I think I heard about maybe two years ago, where, like, the woman who, uh, Yep, they, Jay, you just put it right. Like, she actually admitted lying. <laughs> Before she died, she admitted lying about the fact that, you know, Emmett Till didn't whistle at her at all, right? So, um, there's, a, there's a whole nother uh, twist to it, right? Okay, so again, not going into it. What's up, True Red King? I see you. Um, so, that, that that's a, you know... Again, if you under if you're connected to, uh, uh, well, I don't know, I won't say this, but basically, like this is a cultural reference, right? Those of us Black in America, understanding the story of racism, right? We we know the name Emmett Till, and then with this name Emmett Till, right? There's a whole lot of ideas that kind of get brought to mind, um, right? Uh. Oh no, there it is again. Let me see, we still connected? Okay, I'm gonna stop this part of it because I think my computer is acting up. 
think we're still there. I think we're still going. All right, so Emmett Till, like, there's a whole lot of associations that come up with this reference, right? Um, um, not, not very present, right? Murder, uh, casket, right? And, you know, some people might describe this whole thing as dark, right? And so what's, by bringing in this reference, right, what Rhapsody is able to do, like in this line, right, emit light rap or emit till, right, you have the connection of, right, emit as in to shine, <clears throat> right, so now you have the connection between emit and emit, and so this idea of emit light rap, we have the opposite relationship between light and dark, um, we tend to associate light with good, you know, positive, and this event with Emmett Till is definitely like a, a negative situation. So again, you can interpret this line any way that you want, but what what is happening in this first part is that you have uh, opposites going on. This is something I'm kind of bringing up just now, right? Emmett Light Rap or Emmett Till, right? So the the, the there, it's a choice being given here, right? So the Emmett Light Rap is about you know maybe putting out positive energy positive rap and and uh and a part of like rhapsody's like approach to her writing and philosophy is like you know she's definitely doing it for the culture for hip-hop it's not just about you know a hot line just to get attention and get on like it's it's deeper than that right so this idea of like emit a light rap could possibly be like you know putting out positive vibes or the result is essentially you know, an Emmett Till scenario, Emmett Till situation, right? Where, um, again, this is my interpretation, right? The the result of like not showcasing our genius and putting out positive vibes is that then folks can, you know, create dark scenarios and, you know, tragic situations that Emmett Till was, right? So then, we can keep building off of this, right? So let's say the casket, you know, makes you think of the body. And then now that body, we can connect the Emmett Tills to like the idea of the body. So I drew a line without showing my body. That's a skill. If you have a, here's something that I noticed too. If you have a murder, you have a body. Usually there's a, uh, an outline around the body, right? So this whole phrase of like, hope you can follow the connections here. So drew a line, right? So there's a whole bunch of things that's being brought into that. So the idea of drawing a line without showing my body could be like uh, drawing like, you know, the, like I didn't have to sacrifice my body to, you know, drew a line to basically make this choice right because when you draw a line also like a phrase to draw a line in the sand can come to mind with this right which indicates uh choice right here's a line in the sand don't cross it right so these are the things that um all like these are all the ideas that are just embedded in these like in these two lines, like that, that can be behind these two lines. So, and uh, I just realized something so horrible that apparently it's stuck. Let me see if this helps. Hold on. Yes. All right. Okay. So the camera got stuck, but it looks like you might have still been hearing me. Uh, Warp, what is what's good with you? Um. So yeah. <laughs> it got stuck in there but basically here's just what i was kind of talking through right the main point is that bringing up emmett till as an illusion here gives all these kind of unseen uh unseen connections and associations that you can play with as a writer and then um you know, then, then then you can actually start using them in a way that's not, uh, that again, that it's deep and it's layered. And that's like, I think an inherent part of uh, 
her style. So, um, Emit Light Rapper, Emmett Teal, again, this or that, we're talking about a choice, positive or, um, you know, or negative consequence. I drew a line, so I, I decided that I was going to make this choice. This here is my line um, without showing my body, so I wasn't going to sacrifice my body. And, you know, the result of it is it's a skill, right? It's a skill to be able to get on, um, especially as a female MC, uh, without um, putting your body out there like that. Um, so that that's, and I'm, I'm pulling off from the first verse, and here's another illusion I wanted to uh, point to. So um, let me know if you're following this. Um, hopefully the stream is holding up and my computer is not overheating on me. Um, but hopefully you, you, you caught um, the main point. So I'm just I'm just going to kind of break down some of these illusions here and then just let me know what you what you feel as you get through it. Uh, so in the same same verse, um, I'm still on my spill. So let's just do some rhyming real quick. Uh, so we got the still spill spirit of L Hill. Um, I know Sparrow. Right. And then those like Pharaohs. And then let me see if there's some. Uh, let's see. I'm still on the spill of the spirit. You kind of have like with that short I sound um, that there's still some rhyming there happening uh, in spirit. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like slant rhymes going through all this. Uh, I, we got the I, we got the like, and then we got the nose that goes with the fair nose part. So, um, and then of course I'm in there as well as far as rhyme. So there's a whole lot of, a lot of uh, incidental rhyming happening here. And like, again, that really feeds her style of being a very intricate rhymer. Um, thanks, man. <laughs> thanks, Jay. I see you. Um, all right. So now here's what we're diving into now. So where's the, we kind of have multiple ones, but I'm only going to focus on, um, one. And you can tell by the image, which one I'm going to focus on. Uh, Y'all know who that is, right? Give me three seconds. All right, so this is, of course, the uh, L Hill refers to Lauren Hill, right? So that is our illusion reference right there. Um, and so, And so this, this is where I, like what I was saying earlier, talking about how like, there's one level of illusions where you're just using a like, a, a, a simile or metaphor, right? Um, where like, you know, Rhapsody could have said something like, I'm still on my spill in the spirit of El Hill. And then that whole next line could still maybe relate to the point of just, um, you know, like, describing herself but here's an, a connection so if you don't know, know Lauren Hill um, quick lesson uh, dope MC and singer um, released the, the classic uh, miseducation of Lauren Hill uh, part of the refugees um, uh, crew you know just just super talented and just again and also an ill lyricist as well um, so again, within the culture, especially hip hop culture, um, you know, maybe even black culture, um, there's a reference for Lauren Hill. Um, but she was also an actress as well. Right. And there's a movie that it was called uh, sister act. I don't know if y'all saw it and I believe it might be sister act two that she was in, because I think the original Sister Act was mostly focusing on Whoopi Goldberg. But anyway, in Sister Act 2, there's a scene where she sings a song. Um, and the song is called Eye on the Sparrow. This is like one of those classic um, gospel joints that, you know, 
focusing on the time. Um, <clears throat> so this is where I was talking about that layered, layered thing with the illusions, right? Um, oh yes, good lord, the score. Um, yeah, like low key, like based off of that alone, she's probably like every once in a while if people ask me about my top five i usually will put lauren hill up there every once in a while <clears throat> depending on you know how thorough i'm being but um but just based off of the score alone you know and also she did her thing I'm, yeah just i mean and then the the unplugged i can do a whole thing on lauren hill but i won't i'm, I'm a fan let's just say that uh but here's what I'm talking about, the layered approach, right? The Lauren Hill part, um, like just making reference to Lauren Hill's just once, right? That gives you your basic metaphor, your basic simile. But then coming at it again and pulling another reference that's connected, which in this case is the eye and the sparrow, then that's taking it to another, um, another level, right? And, um, you know, and then from there, you know, she, the eye, eye on the sparrow, knows like a pharaoh. And then of course, there is some, again, the song, the song, eye on the sparrow, because that is a part of culture, that is also another illusion, right? And I don't know the song well enough to kind of give you like some of the ideas that come up around um, eye on the sparrow. But, you know, what I could say from what I do know, right, is that, you know, spirit, so, so maybe the idea of holy, um, <clears throat> I would say like, maybe even purpose, kind of like focused on something greater, right? So if I was actually trying to interpret these lyrics, right, and again, this, here's my lateral shift brain, right? If I was going to make an interpretation on these lyrics, like I was making an interpretation on like anything I was reading, um, this is what I would do. Essentially, it's like, okay, I'll find that phrase and then think of what comes to mind, right? And then I can start in having a, a more in-depth interpretation of what the line actually means, right? So if I'm still on my spill, you know, to me that, you know, it's kind of just like, you know, I'm still flowing, right? Like I'm, I'm still my spill in the spirit of L Hill. So I'm doing this in the spirit of L Hill. What's that spirit like? It's the eye on the sparrow. And I, so what will you focus with that? Well, it's probably maybe holy. It has a purpose. It's doing it for a cause, right? We can get that from understanding the nature of the song, eye on the sparrow. If you don't get this line and you know who L Hill is, then it's because you don't know the reference eye on the sparrow so like anytime you come across a lyric in any song and you're like okay that's maybe it sounded good but i don't understand what it means it might be that they're referencing something of culture that you are unaware of and i think it's important to know this because this is where you can like have a uh Instead of being like, oh, I don't get it and moving on, it's like, oh, I don't get it. And that begins the place of where you develop your curiosity and, you know, dig into it a little bit more. Because then you can really see how MCs are putting these stuff together because once you dig into the references, the points you don't understand, then you'll see everything that's behind it. You're like, oh, right? And then for folks like Rhapsody, where like it's layered, you know, you dig into it and then you see how it like comes, how it's uh, connected to even like an earlier part in the verse. So, um, again, raps, master of illusion for sure. Uh, let's see, Jay, what you say? I believe in, uh, in Egypt, the sparrow was the eye of a higher uh, statue reference to reference royalty. Right, right. And then, and then we also have that same kind of idea with the uh, Pharaoh referencing royalty as well. So like, again, so what's the spirit that she's talking about? Royalty, right? High regard, high status. And uh, I'm gonna put, oops, that's not what I want, I want to do here. Status. This is a bit of an important thing to think about when you're using um, illusions. Status. Um, 
I'll say more. I want to get through uh, Henry Louis, the Henry Louis Gates one, and then I'm gonna come back and talk about status because I think that's one of those things that if you can pay attention to, um, again, you could just again be more intentional and purposeful with uh, your the illusions that you use. Uh, Cyberlax Hunter, let's see. I really thought one time uh, that's the key in life. Um, watching the mistakes. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, join the breakdown. Appreciate you. Hopefully, it's Irie. Am I saying that right? Irie 17. You know, I'll do my best with your the names. You know, if I butcher them, kindly help me out. But yeah. All right, again, same <clears throat> same verse, just a little later. Do I have water? No. <clears throat> okay, there we go. So uh, I don't speak on it nowadays. I just meditate. Y'all can have the bars. I spit hard metal gates. Henry Louis Gates, when I caught me uh, some new estate, uh, make room for myself. I'm in a way different mental place. Okay, uh, let's, you know, get through the rhyming part. Um, so the nowadays, actually, let me do it in uh, red just to kind of keep up. So we got the nowadays, we got the meditate. Um, and then, so we got some multi-syllables going on. Nowadays, meditate, metal gates. Um, Gates. It's not really a multi, but you know, it's it's. I'm going to just circle it just because I want to keep the phrase together. Um, but it is with new estate, Louis Gates, new estate. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna make room for myself in a way different mental place, and I'm just gonna focus on the, uh, you know, the, the strong rhymes right now. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna leave the incidental rhymes out of it just just for the sake of being clear. All right. So, um, the illusion here is this man, right? If you don't know who this man is, this man, he is Henry Lewis Gates. All right. Some things that come to mind with, um, uh, for me, like as I think, all right, Henry Louis Gates, what what associations kind of pop up? Um, scholar, because I believe he's at, I think he's at Harvard. Um, then let me see what there's another. I think he does like the uh, genealogy, and hopefully I'm sp spelling this right. That could be genealogy. I think I it's close enough. I'm unsure in the spelling, so I'm going to do my little underlined thing there. Um, and then, and then here's the other thing that comes up that actually I can see the connections with in this verse is that essentially he was um, arrested but not charged. Um, his home so I don't know if y'all remember this event but essentially what I again my interpretation of it is that um, this is the event that's being referenced because essentially right your home is you know your estate right and that's the line that's the word that's in the verse um, and so if you, the, the, the short story on the, this incident was that he was returning back from a trip uh, to China to his home. And, I, and it's, it was fairly, he was fairly new to the, to the place, but it was his home. And he couldn't like get into his house because I guess the door was jamming. And so, you know, as we all try to do to get into our house when the door jams or it's locked, basically we try to you know shimmy through a window or like we just try to get it so the neighbor called the cops thinking that it could be somebody trying to break in then 
the cops came and essentially, you know, I think he does end up proving that he lives there, but he still gets arrested for, you know, disorderly conduct. And then eventually they drop uh, the charges, right? So that, I feel like that's the event here that's being referenced um, in this line. Um, and and not so much directly to, to the details of the event, but just, just the idea of like him being like that the new estate to me brings up the I, the part of the story where he's like, uh, you know, I just bought a new place, right? And then again, you know, she she writes for the culture, she so she talks about racism and power dynamics and all that stuff, right? So it did this is one of those cases where, you know, on one interpretation of it, it's like another case of racial profiling to where like, okay, a man in his own, you know, with his own property, his own home, because he doesn't look like everybody else in the neighborhood, you know, is suspected to be breaking into his house and, you know, the officer, you know, arresting him, right? So that's the thing that comes up. So that's, all that stuff is layered there. And, Rhapsody does a, so a couple of cool things here. So we have that illusion, right? The Henry Louis Gates caught me some new estate, brings up that idea of home. Then the next part here, make room for myself. So like, you know, when you're moving into a new place, you know, you gotta, you gotta make room, right? So the phrase, um, like the make room for myself, that phrase right there, like you can take it in different, the, there's two meanings to that because of this, the idea here, right? So make room for myself in the sense of like, um, just the the figurative and the, the, the mental aspect of making room for yourself, or just in the, the extension of this metaphor as like, okay, I just bought myself a new estate and now I'm making room for myself. Right. And so again, all of that kind of comes off of the idea of the new estate and the hearing Lewis Gates. And then there's something else I wanted to touch on. Sorry, I'm probably going fast, but you know, yeah, you can, you can watch the replay, uh, is the gates. So did y'all notice how gates repeats? So we have Henry Lewis gates and then we have the hard metal all right so hard metal gates <laughs> those are arrows <laughs> so hard metal gates henry lewis gates so in the last class we talked about repetition feel like I don't spell this word right. Oh, here we go again. Hey, let me uh, flash. I think I learned from last time. Okay. There you go. I feel like I keep... Repetition is one of those words that just always get messed up with me. Uh, well, we talked about repetition in like the last class, which was about two weeks ago. And you can see how... Again, the name, the, the technical name of what she's doing, not important. Just noticing the fact that she does it is. So she repeats gates and um, at the, so she says gates at the end to end the, the second uh, bar of this phrase. And then she comes back with Henry Lewis gates early. So there's a, um, again, there's a certain type of repetition that she's doing there that links them together. Um, you know, obviously using the variation from hard metal to Henry Lewis, right? So like all this, just to show you how intricate Rhapsody is. And I would say, you know, from my, from where I'm, sta my standpoint is like why I enjoy listening to her besides just like, you know, the content that she talks about. Um, I like listening to her because like she really, again makes the illusion and then finds a way to extend 
the illusion, to extend the metaphor of the illusion, right? And so, and I think in both cases, I mean, all three cases, actually, you can kind of see where that extension comes from, right? And then she also does, you know, her illusions are very metaphorical, meaning like, um, it's not so much, she doesn't really use like or as, it's just more of like direct comparisons with the references that she's using. So the Emmett Till, Lauren Hill, and Henry Louis Gates, you know, it's very direct, right? So emit like rap. Cause I mean, you know, you can weaken it by saying emit like rap or end up like in Emmett Till. And that, you know, adding more words and the like takes away of the, the strength of the connection versus what just saying or Emmett Till, right? Uh, let me see what we got here in chat. Um, Jay says, I also take as her uh, getting getting more credit in the rap game as a rapper and she on her mark on hip hop. Yeah, as far as the uh, I make room, right. So like that, that's another valid interpretation, right? Because again, you know, if we were really diving into like all the ideas that just come up in this you know, four, four bars, right? You know, I don't speak on it nowadays. I just meditate, you know, my, by the, the, the comparison of speak on it with meditate, to me, it's like, I don't speak on the drama. I just meditate, especially the drama around, you know, female MCs in the rap game and just the, the, the industry and, and the, the gossip and all that, right? Um, and then the next line too, where it says, you can have the bars, I spit hard metal gates. Like, again, you know, if, you know, the debate about who, who spits harder and, you know, who's like, you know, she's basically saying like, look, I'm not, I'm not in all that. I'm just going to stay in my own space, right? With some meditation, um, you know, and I'm just, you know, essentially like I'm copying me some real estate, you know, cop is another fancy way to say buy, right? Slang way to say I'm buying some, some new, a new estate. So there's the humble brag in there, right? Like. You know, I'm in some new estates, but then, and then again, also mentally, like I'm in a new place. I'm in a different space than where this conversation is happening. You know, people getting caught up in like, um, you know, I'm, I'll say it as a battle of like egos for the most part, right? Like she's not getting caught up in that. She's spinning, she's doing her thing. She's making her room, um, making room for herself. Um, and then all, you know, and again, this is me just pulling from the verse, but like, if you hear the whole verse, uh, in Nina, right, you'll catch more ideas about like, you know, again, like what she's really on, right? Like what, what's her approach to, uh, uh, to, to this, uh, to her style, to her rapping, to her, her philosophy, right? And again, another reason why I love, um, Rhapsody. Um, I mean, my personal preference for MCs is just, I, I like with the one thing I don't know about is like their view and perspective on life because I don't know who they are, right? So if you put that as an MC, if you put those elements into your music um, consciously, uh, and when I make like just not conscious as in like hip hop consciously, but just consciously as in like I'm intentionally revealing some aspect of who I am to you then I'm, I'm more often more often likely to dig it whether you know regardless of the uh, you know the genre of it um, you know I'm impressed by lyricism uh, like folks who can you know just rhyme like 18 syllables and <laughs> crazy things like that um, but if the content's not really revealing something about themselves or what they've gone through or some aspect of life, um, you know, I respect the craft, but it's not something that I'm like, you know, that's like in my heavy rotation because I can, I can appreciate it for what it is. And then I kind of keep it moving, keep it pushing. Um, so this is just, again, my personal preference. Um, all right. So to wrap this up, um, <laughs> it's kind of working out like that. So I started planning this lesson a couple weeks ago. And this phrase came to mind. Um, 
I like to think of have you all heard of the just the iceberg analogy really for anything like when people say like reference oh this thing is like an iceberg like do you have you do you know what uh, what's meant by that just let me know if that comes up for you um <clears throat> so let me see if I can do this all right and then let me see what else was there that was in this case L Hill and then we had Henry Louis Gates This is something that there's a lot of things that I, I could leave you with from this, but this is kind of the phrase that popped in my head was this idea of words are icebergs and the, and the nature that, you know, with apparently, you know, from what I've been told, I've never experienced an, ice, you know, an iceberg, but from what I've been told, like the massiveness that you see of an iceberg, like on top is like a fraction of what the actual size of the iceberg. And I think words in this case, especially with illusions, are icebergs, right? So Emmett Till, L. Hill, Henry Louis Gates, you know, these are just, um, in this case, this is all, peop all people for the most part. We have two celebrities, right? So we got L. Hill, who's a celebrity, Henry Louis Gates, celebrity you know on tv Emmett Till was it's more based on an event right like if that didn't happen to him you know we would not Emmett Till would just be another name right and I think we, I would I'm sad that it, we we only know Emmett Till for the tragedy you know what I mean but again that's getting into that stuff um so Emmett Till is a person that's connected to events and then we have here, these are, you know, essentially high status uh, celebrities. Right. Um, so you hear their names and then the thing that happens that's not directly mentioned is like all these connections that these uh people and words ha have right and we we just kind of you know did that but i'll just say you know for the most part we'll go death here let me can i erase sweet um here we'll go with royalty i'll take i'll go with your uh, suggestion jay here we lose gates we'll go with um uh let's see so just I didn't write this one down there, but I think also. Uh oh, it's about to do it again, aren't you? Yep. Okay, flash it back. <laughs> um. So intellect, you know, mental space. Right. So all these ideas are underneath the surface. So for when you um go and use uh, illusions in your lyrics um like when you're crafting you know you'll you'll make your you know like because we, we do this all the time right it's it's not it's not something that like you really have to intentionally try to do it's just a part of a uh, language so like you know if you've ever compared yourself to a rapper if you ever compared yourself to a basketball player an athlete uh you know, or compared somebody else to, you know, a different type of celebrity or an athlete, um, you're using illusion. Um, and what I would say is to give it more weight, start thinking about what are some other things that are associated with the people that you're referencing and the events that you're referencing and then see how you can use that to come up with the next line. Right, and how to how to embed that more, and and then you'll have uh, some more uh, weight to it. And sometimes you can do it in a way where 
again, only like, and I think people who are really masterful at this, where it's like, you hear the lyric and it sounds good. People who may not get it, they're still rocking with it because it sounds good. But then those people who do get it, it's like they get an extra little treat because they understand uh, the reference and then the, the extension of that, you know? So I, those are the kind of rappers that I also um, enjoy. So um, I think that's it. I wanted, what did I want to say about status? I'm just checking my notes here. Um, I think that is everything. I did. I was going to dive into um, I was going to dive into status and stuff, but I think I might save that for another day because you know time, and I don't want to just uh, nerd out for this whole thing. So, um. All right, so take a moment and just like, you know, in the chat or in the comments, depending on when you're watching this, uh, just what's your takeaway uh, from today's lesson? What will you try? You know, I didn't necessarily give, um, I kind of did, but I didn't talk about the technique. Um, yeah, and I appreciate you being here, Sablex. Um, I didn't necessarily give, uh, the um, I was showing you a technique to kind of figure out ways to, to take your illusions a little bit deeper, but I didn't, I didn't explicitly talk about it. But you see how I was like, it's still, let me see, is it still up? So maybe one of these days I'll actually show you this technique a little further, but um. So here, let me see if this, go back to that for a second. Yeah. All right. Oops, sorry, there's that. That's one. Okay. What? Why are you stepping on that? Sure you stepping on that. All right, I'm gonna, let me switch it up again. <laughs> you said it's uh, Eli? Is that your name? I'll, I'll remember that better next time. I'll speak down a little bit. It's a little loud to me. Um, but you see how how I'm like diagramming this stuff out. So I think there's a video on here. Um, all right, the last dawn. All right, I see. Uh, I think there's a video on the channel that is that I think I demonstrate this process. And if not, um, I actually do want to probably do a lesson on, uh, I mean, I've called it so many different things for mapping. I think right now I'm calling it um, so this word web. Um, yeah, but basically it's the idea that allows you to like, uh, play like to really kind of dig up all the associations that come up with the words really kind of dig beneath the surface and then you can find some unique connections there uh to build lyrics off of so um instead of the process of like just all right blank page and you just try to craft the lyric in your head and just put it out there you start playing and just bring up all these associations and ideas and you put it in front of you and then you're able to like notice connections and then you can write to those connections and then you have a more, uh, again, layered verse. So that's what I would recommend doing for your illusions, right? To, to get them to a deeper level. Um, and again, more to come on that. But any other takeaways for y'all uh, on this, on illusions? Um, Maybe you'll listen differently. I, I think, I, I hope that helps expanding like the way we uh, listen to music, especially listen to lyrics. Uh, I hope it helps again, the 
you know, for my folks that will see this, uh, cause I'll probably show some clip of this in class. Um, work smarter, not harder, right? But for my folks who see this, who like are practicing rap writing, but you know, don't intend on like pursuing it, but you're just practicing it because one, I might be making you <laughs> or um, you're just practicing for yourself. Uh, just like taking, uh, and I think someone said it earlier. I'm gonna see if I can find it because I really like the way they put it. Uh, where you at? Where you at? Happened? Was it Jay? Did you say that Jay? You've been dropping knowledge throughout this whole thing. Uh, someone said like I just uh, it was like the way of life or something like that. Like essentially when you come across something you don't understand and really anything but especially like reading lyrics that becomes the indication to dig deeper into it to get that understanding and most likely um if again you know what all the words mean like i literally know that oh that's a name Right. But if you don't know the significance of the name or the significance of the event, then you're dealing with a cultural reference that you don't have knowledge of. And that's the place where you start your research and you look into that and then you get more knowledge and you understand the lyric better. Probably increasing your enjoyment of the song as long as like, you know, you agree with the overall message that's being expressed. But that's a more of a subjective conversation at that point. Uh, let me see. Eli says, yeah, control and illusions with breath. I would say so. With breath. I'm, I, wonder, I wonder what you mean by that. With breath. With breath here. Uh, Jay, you say, I want to spend more time learning history to be more aware of connections. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, you know, I mean, I'm not a historian, but I've become, it's like, you start to become a historian by digging into the references that you don't get, you know? And, and I think that's the cool thing about that is you're doing it from interest, right? You're not doing like, Oh, I got to read about my history. It's like, you know, you come across something you don't understand. It's like, ah, that's dope. But like, who's this person? And what's this event? And then you go and educate yourself and it's like, ah, I know what it means. And I'm now, if you make that a habit, like you just start becoming more knowledgeable about things um, all over, like, you know, like, because rapping is one of those art forms that you pull from everything lyrically. So you start be having, becoming a jack of all knowledge in a little bit because you're, uh, all the different references aren't necessarily all pulling from, you know, the same uh, aspects of history. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a really good takeaway. And then on the flip side, right, it gives you, especially for those people who are really into writing lyrics and you want to write lyrics in this layered and intricate way, you have to load up. So you actually have to know some stuff, right? So that means you have to pay attention to the history lessons. You have to pay attention to um, the events that are going on now, uh, right? You, ha you have to be soaking that in with the intentionality of how do I communicate this through a lyric, you know? And then once this becomes like a way of life, you'll you'll start doing that um, naturally, I think. At least that, that's happened for me a few times where when I really get into my um, current event zone, um, I can start making better references uh, when I'm paying more attention. But sometimes, like, you know, I'll be in eternal space too. But basically, you got to pay more attention to life and things and information because then that allows you to make reference to it. Because really what culture really is, is just ways of life. So if you pay attention to how people are living, then you can use that in your lyrics. All right. Um, cool. So yeah, any more takeaways and things, uh, you know, put them in the comments. 
because I, I like to see what folks are getting out of it. Um, stay connected with us. Um, also, if you have any questions, I have like probably like a 10 minutes or so for questions if folks want to ask anything. Um, but supporting us and supporting the channel and Hip Hop Lit for Life and all that. Um, I didn't make this announcement, but basically like Hip Hop Lit for Life is just it. Hip Hop Literature is an actual class that I teach at Franklin High School in Portland, Oregon. And I just had this idea based on the whole distance learning thing. It's like, shoot, why don't I just teach it online? Because it's pretty much what I'm doing anyway when I'm teaching my classes uh, during uh, quarantine and all that. So that became the, the, the start of this, if you will. And um, we're going to keep it going. You know, I'm going to flip. I'm going to have summer things coming up. Um, I'm thinking more of an office hours approach where like I actually get to uh, potentially work with people um, on the stream um, with content, uh, with lyrics, with, you know, whatever comes up. So, um, but then my intention, you know, we gotta, you know, gotta see how it works, but my intention is to keep the uh, live stream classes going and just basically keep keep folks help folks learn about uh, life through the lens of hip hop literature. So um, stay connected. Uh, every Sunday I put out a new um, um, article, if you will, for the Rhyme Masters Journal, and also update about various changes to the Rhyme Masters uh, community. So that's rhymemastersjournal.substack.com. You can check that out there. And then um, if you are, you consider yourself a growth-minded rapper. So you basically are pursuing personal growth and you use rap skills to help you do it. We got a community for you. It's uh, free to join. Just go to rhymemasters.com. You can be a part of the, um, the community. Stay connected with other growth-minded rappers. So, um, you know, we're not just... Uh, out here all alone, rapping to ourselves. Cause um, yeah, it's, it's for those folks who are gonna, you know, regardless if they get put on or not, they're gonna be rapping. So if that sounds like you, come join us and uh, you know, help us build, help us grow. And yeah, no questions, nothing. It's all good, you can ask them in the comments. All right, so here's the last thing I'll end with uh, next class. Again, summer term dates are coming soon. Um, so just kind of be checking, again, subscribe to the journal, Rhyme Masters Journal for updates on that. Um, I'll also post to the community page on YouTube as well. And um, yeah, our last little question, this or that, I'm gonna talk about slides. Do you prefer to slide to the left or slide to the right? It's my fun little question. Let me see if anybody jumps on that. We slide to the left or slide to the right? All right. All right, Eli, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, man. Am I jumping on that one though? Are we, are we not the sliding type? If a song comes on talking about slide to your left, you're like, no, I don't dance. <laughs> I would probably say to the left because I'm left-handed. I'm on the left coast. And usually folks say slide to the left first. I don't know why. Of all the songs I'm thinking of, the to the left seems to be the one that happens the most. Uh, Jay, you got a question. Looks like it's coming here. Would you put adding layers in your lyrics over what sounds good? Um, it's the art at that point, right? And so it's the intention behind the writing. So if you're writing a song with the intention of it being more, let's say, about a vibe and more about musicality of your um, 
of your or your of your voice, right? Then the layers could complicate that, right? Because if people don't understand what you're saying, uh, and it doesn't sound um, good. Not that it sounds, uh, not that it sounds bad, but it just doesn't like if the way that you're saying it is not appeasing to the ear and they don't understand it, then there's a chance that people stay disconnected from it, right? Like they don't like it. Uh, and then if you're doing it like, and again, the attention of the song. So if you have a song where it's like, okay, now this, this is the type of song that I get lyrical on then you're thinking about the layers, right? The layers of meaning that you can uh, put into it. Uh, I think the challenge, right, is sounding good and with layers. Like that. that's the crafting that comes into play, right? And, and it, it could, and depending on what you lean on, like for me, because I like, you know, I'm intellectual, right? I like layers. Um, so making it sound good would be like making a song j for it, just how it sounds, it's more of a challenge for me, right? Like keeping the layers out and it's just like, you know, I'm not caring about really what I'm saying as long as it just rides the beat and sounds nice. Like I, it's hard. It's harder for me to do that. I can, but it, there's more tension when I do it that way versus when I'm going to the intellectual lyrical side, where it's like less tension because that's kind of what I prefer. Um, but as I talk about mastery, I like, I it's you need to be able to adjust, right? Adjust for your audience, adjust for who might be listening to the particular song. Um, and and that, that this is a writing i'm answering it from a writing perspective from a freestyling perspective again it, that's really situational if you're freestyling in a place for performance you know you, you probably aren't going to go super layered you don't want to be so layered that people aren't following along um so if i'm freestyling for like little kids right the fact that I can stay on beat and like make things rhyme is enough for them. If I'm freestyling for, you know, hip hop heads, then I'm going to push the lyrical layer a bit. Like I'm, I'm gonna try to get out of the, like, just making it sound good. So, um, so yeah, like, you know, so my personal preference is like if it's a choice between it sounding good and the layers like if I'm if it's if it's like zero sum and I guess it's my poetry major for my personal preference I probably put the layers over just sounding good what I actually pursue is both right and then what I say to you and anybody listening is that what you decide to prioritize is really based on the intention of that song in that moment. But you do need to make a prioritization. You know what I mean? Like you, you need to, you do need to answer that question for yourself, but it's not going to be a static, like, like hands down, everything I do just needs to sound good regardless of what I say. So that's my uh, take on that. So hopefully that was helpful for you, Jay. <clears throat> um, all right. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you for your participation. Uh, you know, share the channel with folks. Uh, share this video with folks. I think we actually, we did have some hiccups in it, but we were able to at least keep it all together as one. I know partly what I'm going to do. My actual school year at Franklin just ended. So I'm looking forward to the time to be able to go in and like edit some of the live stream classes to maybe make them a little bit more condensed. 
so they're easier for viewing and sharing. Um, so look for that uh, coming through as well. Um, yeah, you know, I really appreciate y'all coming through and engaging. And, you know, we're going to keep doing the thing and keep, keep making the things happen. So appreciate you. I'm going to go ahead to the rest of my day. And uh, more good things coming soon. So stay tuned, stay locked. Remember, free that genius over doubt. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. <laughs>